Okay, this is um, Engineering uh, 360, VHDL, and uh, this is uh, Lab 3, Part 3. So let's go ahead and uh, do a new project. Okay. And what we'll do is we'll call this Lab 3, and we'll call it 3B Demo. It's the second part of the lab. We've already done the first part. And, you know, we double-check everything. We've got our XC3S500E. FG320, flat grid 320, VHDL instead of Verilog, 93 down here. All right, that's good. Now, on the second part of this lab, um, what we're going to do is um, do a, um, a decoder, an active low decoder. All right, so let's go up to here. Let's make sure we're in the simulation mode as opposed to implementation. Let's close up the hierarchy window, show there's nothing there. Project new source. Okay, let's make it a VHDL module, and we'll call this guy encoder. Okay. And uh, do a next. Now we used to skip this, but let's not skip it anymore. On this particular one here, what we're going to do is um, enter our inputs and outputs. Now a decoder typically has an enable, all right, and that guy is one bit. All right, so there's your enable. And then it has a control input. We'll call it A. Okay, it's also in. And then it's a bus. And for um, three to eight decoder, you're going to have three bits on that bus. All right, two down to zero. And then it has an output. We'll call it Y. So let's change that to out. It's also a bus. And then the output Y will be seven uh, down to zero. Seven being the most significant bit. So this right here is going to stub out our entity. Okay little information about the project, port definitions, and finish. All right, let's do the same thing. Let's get rid of all the comments. We can just focus on the VHDL. And there you go. Uh, you know, we have a library, the uh, IEEE library, the standard logic 1164 package. Allows me to use standard logic, standard logic vector. Then that little uh, window we just went through sets up the encoder. There's enable, one bit, standard logic, input. A is your control input, uh, standard logic, three bits, and then here's your output, eight bits, three to eight decoder. All right. So let's uh, do the architecture block. Now, what I'm going to do on the architecture block is um, I'm going to incorporate the control with um, the enable. So I'm going to declare a signal called S. It's going to be standard logic vector. And here it's going to be 3 down to 0. All right, so I've just declared the variable. The reason I take 3 down to 0 because I want to take my control, which is 2 down to 0, and I want to concatenate it with enable. All right, so I need a new variable. So now here I'm going to define S, and I'm going to say S is equal to enable concatenated with A. So enable is a 1-bit, A is a 3-bit, and now S is a 4-bit quantity. And then I want to use the width or the select conditional assignment statement. So I'm going to say width s select. And then underneath here, we could say y, our output, is equal to okay, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. All right, that means the device is not abled when, okay, when sel or a select is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, all right, or 0, 0, 0, 1, okay. or let's see what else we have, um, 0, 0, 1, 0, okay, or let's see what else, 0, and then you have 0, 1, 1, all right, or let's say we can go 0, 1, 0, 0, okay. or 0, 1, 0, 1, or can I get the idea here, 0, 1, one zero and we'll do one more or uh, zero one 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 now what I'm doing here is I'm taking all the possible cases where the most significant bit is zero so you notice that most significant bit is zero okay it's all zero that most significant bit is always zero right there there and there well that most significant bit corresponds to the enable bit so when it's disabled that enable bit is zero we're not going to assert any outputs okay now, when we come down to here, well, we could have some other stuff, all right? So we can kind of come over to here, and we could say, well, we're going to assert the zero pin, okay, when 
the device is enabled, all right, that bit is set, and the control input is zero. All right, set the there. And now at that point, we're just going to copy and paste this guy. Let's see. Uh, no, actually, we need to put a um, you know we need to put a zero there because we're going to assert that guy. So then, at this point, we could do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. And now that um, we're going to delete that guy and put a one there, and we're just going to kind of move this uh, zero down. All right. And then, um, you know, if you look at the truth table on an active load decoder, one of the bits gets uh, asserted. All right, here the second one will get asserted. And then here the most significant bit will get asserted. And I don't think I need the last one. Okay. So uh, this case right here corresponds to a control of zero. This one here control uh, corresponds to a control of one. All right. And then, of course, uh, this would be 2, and this would be 3, 4, 5, 6. And then down here, we could just say, when others. And then semicolon. And we're done. There you go. Yeah, so this is your uh, 3 to 8 active low decoder. All right, we've got some uh, errors here. Let's figure out. Let's see if I click right there. What's my error? Well, that's kind of a common error. You know, the equal sign has to have that arrow in front of it, all right? And there you go. So now we're done. Yeah, we create a temporary variable. We concatenate enable one bit with the control two bit, which gives me um, a uh, three bit signal. Or no, actually, A is three, enables one. It's a four bit signal. And then over here are all the possible values. These are all the possible values when the device is disabled. And then when enable is one, you've got all the remaining, you've got seven other possibilities. And these guys will assert a particular bit, y0, y1, y2, y3, y4, y5, y6, and y7. Right. Okay, so let's go ahead and highlight that guy. Save everything. Open up the simulator and check the syntax on this. Great, now what we need to do is highlight our project. Go to, say, New Source, and let's add a test bench file. Okay, we want test bench, and this guy will be a test bench on the encoder. Okay. I do a next. Well, the only thing I have is an encoder, so I'll just select that next. And then here's my test bench file. Okay. Come on, let's go. Open up the test bench file. There you go. So now your explorer over here, you see your encoder, and then you see the test bench for the encoder kind of uh, on top of it there. Let's again take out all the comments so we can focus on the VHDL. There's your library. There's your entity block. Now this is a test bench file for the encoder, so you have to declare the encoder. All right? And that looks just like the entity, except for the entity keyword. You have the word component, and you take off the is keyword. Okay. Now here's the signals, T, B, E, N, A. All right, so or E, N, A. Let's change this to T, B, so we know these are test bench files. Okay. And then we'll call this TB. Now we're not going to use any clocks. So let's get rid of the clocks like we've always done. We will use a clock sooner or later. Now, note, you declare the component here. You instantiate the component here. What are we instantiating? We're instantiating an encoder. Here's the port map. Here's the variables of the encoder. And these guys would be the variables of the current file. Okay. TB. Now, we're not going to use this clock process, so we can get rid of that guy. And then we just have our, stimulate process, uh, our stimulus process down here. Now, let's see. Uh, I can get rid of this clock because I haven't declared that. Okay. And uh, wait for uh, 100 nanoseconds. So at this point right here, you can uh, implement your test code. Now, what we've done is we've just kind of blindly enumerated through things. All right. So let me copy and paste some code here, and I can show you. You know, this is kind of the brute forced way of doing things. Control C. Uh, come down to here and do this. There you go. Okay. And let's see, what do I got? Okay, it looks like those are commented out. So we want to uncomment these guys. What you can do is you can kind of highlight this stuff, select them, right click, and then say uncomment the selection. Okay. 
So now they're uncommented. So that's kind of what we've been doing up uh, up to now, you know. We in, we don't enable the device. We set A, then we change A, and then we wait. We change A, then we wait. We change A, and then we wait. But notice, enable is always disabled here, right? Okay. Well, let's do the same thing. Let's copy all these guys. And then here, let's paste them. But now let's come down to here and um, let's see. Okay, uh, at this point right here, I'm going to make a comment here that says enable chip. And then now what I want to do is I want to set my enable to 1. And then I want to count through all the possibilities on my control. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and save that guy. Select the encoder, check its syntax. And check the test bench file, check its syntax. All right, and now let's just uh, simulate it. Make sure test bench is selected. Double click simulate behavior model. And let's see, the computer's really slow today. I should get a window popping up here. There it is. Oh my gosh, really slow. All right, let's do zoom to full view, and there you go. Yeah, look what's going on. Uh, the first pin right here is TB enable. Notice it's zero all along here, so the device is disabled. But I'm changing my control input. I'm counting from 0, 1, 2, 3, all up to 7. It's 3 bits, 0 to 7. But up top here, I enable it, and then I repeat the counting 0 to 7. But notice what happens at the output. Now I get some output. Now you can open up these guys if you want, and look what's happening here. I've got 0 on the input, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I'm scrolling through 0 to 7 on the control input, uh, and then the lines below it are the individual bits. But notice the output never changes. Well, that's because the device is disabled. Now over here, I've got the device enabled. TB enable is equal to 1. So then if I go from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, you can see. Down here we assert Y0, here we assert Y1, here we assert Y2, Y3, Y4, Y5, Y6, Y7, and there you go. You've simulated an active low. Active low means it gets the pin goes low when it gets asserted. Active low 3 to 8 decoder. All right. Now let's see. Let's do one more thing. Let's close this guy. Do you really want to exit? Uh, yes. And let's comment all this stuff that we did here, all this brute force stuff, because that's really not the way you want to do it. Yeah, you really don't want to do that. Let's comment out this entire code. Okay. Right click, and I'll say comment selection. All right, so that's gone. What you really want to do is something like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste it, and I'm going to let you figure it out. All right. Let's copy that guy, and we'll paste it in there. And notice what I'm doing. I am basically doing a uh, for loop. So notice what we have here. Now we can come down to here and uh, let's see. Um, oh, what did I copy in here? I copied this guy in loop wait, and then I have in loop. Now this is my in process statement. Okay, that got messed up in the copy part. Yeah, what I did is uh, let's put an infinite wait in here. And then what I did is I said, instead of doing this brute force, let's set up a for loop. Here I set the enable pin to 0, so nothing's going to happen. And then I said, let's loop i from 0 to 7. Well, i defaults to an integer. First thing I have to do to i is I have to convert it to a signed quantity 3 bits. And there's a reason I do 3 bits, because TBA is 3 bits. So once I get it to a signed quantity, then I can convert it to a standard logic vector, and I can sign it to TBA. Then I wait 50 nanoseconds, and I go back up here, i is equal to 1. Convert it to sign, convert it to standard logic. So here I'm looping from i equals 0 to 7. Now in the loop down here, the only difference is I enable the device. Once again, I loop from 0 to 7. 
um, I convert it to a signed, and then I convert it to a standard logic, and then I assign this guy. Now, if we try to compile this guy, what's going to happen? I wonder if it'll. Uh, I wonder if it'll check syntax. Check syntax will pass. Nope. We get an error. All right. Let's go to our first error here, and it doesn't like this statement here. Why not? Well, we're using signed data. What does that tell you? Well. Got back up here in the library. We got to do this guy right here, right? Use I triple E dot was it numeric underscore standard dot all. Yeah, save that, and let's try uh try try it now. And I bet it'll compile. Yep. All right. Let's make sure everything is up to snuff. That's up to snuff. Let's uh, run this guy. And let's see, we should get exactly the same thing because we just replaced the brute force approach with two for loops. Okay, so a little bit more sophistication in the testing process. Well, my machine is really slow tonight. And there you go, there's the simulator. We should get exactly the same thing. And if we zoom out, there you go. There it is. Yeah, we were just kind of seeing the tail end right there until I zoomed out. But yeah, as I count through the control input from 0 to 7, nothing happens at the output. It's all FF because it's disabled. Up here, I enable the chip. Uh, TB enable is 1. And then as I count through from 0, I get the 0 line asserted, 1, the 1 line asserted, Y2 asserted, Y3 asserted, Y4 asserted, Y5 asserted, and Y6 asserted, and then Y7 asserted. All right, and then we stay right there because that infinite weight. There you go. So let's go back to here and kind of summarize what we did on our test bench. We took out all this hard-coded stuff, okay, and we replaced it with, there you go, two for loops. So this was our entire test thing. We did a loop, i equals 0 to 7, but i is of type integer. I have to convert that to sign. I'm converting i to a sign. Well, a sign, you need to tell it how many bits. Three bits, because we're going to assign it to a standard logic of three bits. I take i, which is integer, I convert it to sign, then I convert it to standard logic, and then I assign it there. I wait, I loop back up, and I change i from to the next value. And there you go. So a little more sophistication in your test process, all right? Okay, great. That ends this uh, video. We'll see you next time.